one of the most common and cost-effective suspension mods for your car. It can improve your car's handling and looks immediately. Coilovers. So in this episode, I'm going to be installing a set of coilovers on this Project Miata. I'm going to talk about how they work, all the features and adjustments, and how to pick the right one for your car. This is MZ, and I'm about to do a knee surgery on this Miata. Let's do this. So what are coilovers? Coilover is actually short for a coil spring over shock absorber. So it's a shock absorber with a coil spring around it. It's a surprise. The coil spring is basically just a spring. It does the bouncy bits. The shock absorber is basically a piston and rod assembly sealed in a case filled with hydraulic fluid. And its job is to absorb the shocks. Another surprise. As the piston in the shock assembly moves up and down in the tube, it forces the oil to go through some small holes, which slows down or dampens the movement of the piston. For example, when your wheel goes over a bump on the road, the piston is pushed down into the damping case. This forces the oil through small holes to the other side of the piston to make room for the piston to move. The piston can only move as fast as the oil can flow through those holes. Now this is called compression damping because obviously it's happening during compression. Now the coil springs, they always want to rebound to their resting height. The shock absorber dampens this rebound by again forcing fluids through small holes which slow down the movement of the piston. This is called rebound damping. Without all this damping, your springs would overcompensate and your car would basically just hop after every pothole. Although it does sound fun, you don't want it for handling. And that's how coilovers work. But you might be asking, didn't my car already come with coilovers? And you'd be right, most modern cars already come with coilovers from factory. Like this one right here is the stock coilover for the Project Miata, it's for the rear. So if your car comes with coilovers from factory, Jesus. So if your car comes with coilovers from factory, then what's all the hype? Adjustability. There are no adjustments here. This is what you get and that's it. This is it, you ride with this. Whereas if you get a nice set of aftermarket coilovers, you can adjust your ride height to your liking, adjust your damping. You can set your preload and sometimes you can even adjust your camera. You can basically dial in your suspension exactly the way you want. You can't do any of these with the stock ones. Look at it. And that's why people get aftermarket coilovers. But how do you pick the right one for your car? What features do you look for? Well, it all depends on how you want to use the car. And the more features and adjustments the coilovers have, the more expensive they're gonna be, obviously. But most, if not all, should allow you to adjust your damping in some form or way. Higher end coilovers allow you to adjust your compression and rebound damping separately. Next thing you should pay attention to is whether or not the coilovers have independent height adjustment. This usually means the damper has a threaded body that threads in or out of the sleeve to lower or raise your car. Otherwise, you would have to adjust your preload for height adjustment. Now, here's the thing. Most higher end coilovers actually don't have this feature. So this is not to say if you don't have independent height adjustment, coilovers are garbage. It's a feature you should look for if you're going for a specific stance. Another thing you should pay attention to is the top mounts that come with the coilovers. The stock top mounts that are on your car are most likely rubber to give you a nice soft ride on the street. Most aftermarket coilovers though come with pillow ball top mount, which is basically solid metal to give you a sharper and more precise handling. You can still get ones with rubber top mounts. They're still going to be stiffer than your stock one for that precise handling. And some coilovers don't even come with top mounts. You have to buy them separately or you use your stock ones. Some top mounts are also adjustable or they have camber plates. These allow you to adjust your camber angle right from the strut tab. Now, last thing you should look into is serviceability. Can you revalve or even rebuild these dampers if anything goes wrong? Because it would suck to have to buy new ones every time something small goes wrong with the dampers. Like they're not cheap. Now, if your car is going to be on the track once or twice a year and you're going to spend most of the time on the street, maybe you shouldn't go for a $10,000 set of Moton coilovers that give you three-way adjustable damping that you have no idea how it would change your handling. On the other hand, you don't want to go too cheap either. If all you're looking for is to lower your car as cheap as possible, a nice set of lowering springs on your stock suspension is way better than a cheap set of coilovers. So be realistic with how you want to use the car and your driving ability. Now my goal for the Project Miata is to build a capable street car 
that I can take to a track pretty often and have some fun with. Nothing too crazy. So I went for a set of Olin's Rodent Track Coilover. It has a one-way damping adjustment which controls most of the rebound which is all I need. Independent height adjustment, because I like to set my preload and then adjust my height to wherever I want. And no camber plates, because they're pretty much useless on this car. All the camber angles that I want, I can just get from the control arms. So, I don't need it. Okay, enough of the talk, let's get these installed on the Miata. But Olin's, being a Swedish company, just like Ikea, it uh, came in multiple boxes and uh, some assemblies required. So uh, we're going to find out if I can follow instructions. Let's get the stock ones out. I'm excited. I want to put these in. Okay, so here's the situation we're dealing with. This right here is the stock coilover. In this car, it goes through the upper control arm and attaches to the lower control arm. And then from up there, the strut tower, it's held on by these nuts. Uh, one there and one there. Stock coilover. First thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna disconnect the sway bar. Obviously having an impact gun would speed things up, but you could do this job with a breaker bar and a ratchet set. There, the sway bar is disconnected. Keep your bolts and nuts organized. Now we're gonna remove this big bolt down there in the lower control arm. You can usually just pull it out, wiggle it out. Good, that's that. Now we're gonna go up and remove it from the strut tower. Done, look at that. Now that we have it detached from both the top and the bottom, we can push this all the way down and try to wrestle this out finally pull it out with the help and stuff. I prefer to be lazy and do the easy method. I'm just gonna detach the upper control arm and uh, slide this out. Sometimes the impact gun don't fit, so you gotta do this. Okay, now you let it, you pull it down. This is off. Okay. Ah, oh, nice and slow. Great. Yeah, that's gone. Coil over here. I don't want to scratch it. Don't scratch it. It's just easier to line up when it's uh, it's nice and loose like that. There you go. 
and we're just gonna make it snug. We're not gonna tighten it down like gorilla tight, you know? That should be good. You just wanna guide it through. You don't want this. There you go. For extra performance, you bang against everything that's in your way. I'm gonna leave the sway bar like that, do the other side, and then come back and tighten it down. Now we're gonna reattach the upper control arm. Okay, again, if you don't wanna make it super tight, we're gonna come back and torque these down. Okay, now we're done with the other side, we're just gonna reattach our sway bar. Now we're done with both sides on the front. Uh, it looks good, a little rusty, uh, but it looks good. We're gonna do the rear axle and then come back and torque everything down. The rear is gonna be pretty similar too, actually, so. I've already disconnected the sway bar on this side. Now I'm gonna undo this bolt. Nice. Now we're gonna go in the trunk and detach it from up there. So I'm just gonna disconnect it from here because it's just one bolt instead of back there. It's hard to reach and uh, it's just the one bolt. There you go. And we just lost another nut. Don't fight me. Ah, you don't fight me. This should come out. Ooh, look at that rust. It's so much shorter. Look at that. Just like the front, I'm gonna put this through first. Go. This now I'm gonna attach the sway bars and then torque everything down. And to torque down the suspension bolts, you want the car's weight on the suspension, not just hanging off like that. I'm gonna jack up every corner, put some weight on it, and then just torque everything down. Okay, so we removed all the stock coilovers, we put the new ones back in, and we have them set at their reference specs as recommended by the manufacturer, and we torqued everything down for now, they're gonna get retorqued at the alignment shop. Now, the first thing we should do is take it for an alignment. We touch the suspension, obviously. But uh, I wanna take it for a ride now and see how it feels. And it feels amazing. Look at this, taking this corner. Yeah, feels good. Feels real good. Feels real good. Now, the stock suspension was really loose and just bouncy, wishy-washy all over the place. Super comfortable, like don't get me wrong, but I didn't feel exactly confident in the corners. Now it feels much more planted and confidence inspiring. The car actually feels lighter and the lower center of gravity really helps and you definitely feel the road. This is, this is really nice. And aside from handling, it looks way better at this ride height. Looks like a goddamn SUV. I know what you're thinking. Yes, wheels are common. Be patient. But before the wheels, there's another suspension part that I need to upgrade, sway bars. So on the next episode, I'll be installing a beefier set of sway bars just to see what kind of difference it'll make. So if you enjoy this kind of content, consider subscribing and follow me on TikTok and Instagram at Emzapyrus. See you next week and thanks for watching.